The health care crisis affects everyone, but some worry children are especially vulnerable. In my office, 70% of the children we care for have Medicaid insurance. All day long, we've been looking at the health care crisis and the impact changes could have on people here in Michigan. Some experts say proposed cuts could hit children especially hard. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with a closer look at why. Well, Devin and Sandra, one of the key provisions of the bill currently be con being considered in the Senate involves big cuts to Medicaid. In Michigan, 41% of our state's kids are receiving help from Medicaid. That's nearly a million children. And tonight, the doctors who help care for them, well, they're concerned. It just seems really surprising that we would cut a program that affects so many children. It seems short-sighted. Dr. Sharon Swindle is the president-elect of the Michigan chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. She's also a practicing pediatrician at Ypsilanti Pediatrics. In my office, 70% of the children we care for have Medicaid insurance, and a lot of them have um, special health care needs, chronic health care conditions. It would have a huge impact on them. Currently, the federal funding for Medicaid is not capped. The proposed Senate bill would change that, leaving states to make up the lost funds or reduce coverage or benefits. As it is now, the terminology is states will have increased flexibility. I interpret that as increased flexibility to decide what gets cut. America Gomez works full time as a medical assistant, but worries about her own family's health care. Her two year old daughter, Jocelyn, was born with a brain defect, hydrocephalus, and some developmental delays. She needs audiology, uh, vision, um, PT, occupational health speech therapy. Gomez has health insurance through work, but Medicaid helps fill in the gaps. That's a huge help because every specialty appointment, it's a higher copay. So it's like $30 for every appointment. It's care that Gomez says is helping Jocelyn exceed doctor's expectations. Some of them thought she wasn't going to walk. Some of them thought, some of them think, you know, oh, she probably won't ever do this or that. And so she's been proving them. But it feels because she has all this great care. Without help from Medicaid, she would have to make difficult choices. I would have to think about more about what appointments are crucial. People have this mis misconception that it's only people that don't work that have Medicaid. It's only people who are abusing the system. No, it's hardworking people also are affected. Pediatrician Dr. Terry Joyner says those difficult choices could end up costing more in the long run. If we cannot see those patients, they have to go elsewhere or nowhere, and I'm afraid that elsewhere might be going to the emergency rooms for fragmented and less quality care. Swindle urges lawmakers to consider the long-term investment. Protect the children, and investing in their health allows them to go to school. If they can go to school, they're going to get their education. If they can get their education, they're going to be able to work. Now, some have also raised concerns that the bill would end expanded Medicaid coverage in Flint that was set up to help children and pregnant women that were exposed to lead in the water. Clearly, a lot of factors to consider in all of this. And we've also heard some protests that uh, referring to it as a cut when it is actually a cut to a planned increase, which I guess some see as different. Well, you know, Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, is the law of the land. So the planned increase is what exists right now. So if you cut it, it's a cut. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, all right, Doc. Thanks, Doc.